So I'm delighted to, to uh, welcome you to the event today, which is going to explore attitudes to breastfeeding in Northern Ireland using data from two of our surveys at, that were asked in 2019. And in particular, I really want to express our gratitude to the Research and Development Office within the Public Health Agency um, for funding these questions and supporting the work. Very, it's very important that we A, record public attitudes, but B, we give a chance for these attitudes and information to feed back into the public realm and also to policymakers. The format of the presentation today is that our speakers will talk for about 25 to 30 minutes, and then we will have um, some questions and answers. Um, your audio and your um, cameras are all turned off, so please submit any questions you have using the chat function. And we will finish the, uh, the webinar. At Can you hear me, everybody? Yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, lovely. Thank you for that warm introduction. And um, I'm Marlene Sinclair, and I'm the uh, head of the Mid um, Maternal Fetal and Infant Research Centre at Ulster. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here with my colleagues today. When, and on, on the left of your screen, you've got Rachel Blacks. Rachel, say hello, please. And uh, to my right or the left of your screen, you've got uh, Julie McCulloch. Hi, everyone. Hello. And at the bottom left is Paul Snader. Say hello, Paul. That's it. Super, hello, super. Thank you very much. It's important to have folks. So this afternoon now, as, as uh, Paula beautifully said, uh, sit back and relax. What we want to do is we want to take this opportunity, first and foremost, to say it's great to be here. We're delighted to be here as a team to be sharing sharing uh, this opportunity sounds time with you these next 25 minutes and we hope over the next 25 minutes to um, give you um, a flavor and an insight into uh, into the results of the uh, of the questions which have been asked for the first time in the life and time survey in relation to breastfeeding so we're delighted um, to have been asked and we'd like to thank Anne Marie Gray and we'd like to thank uh, 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 Paula uh, uh, as well, we'd like to thank you both, Paula Devine, for, for the opportunity uh, to get involved in this work and more importantly, for the opportunity to allow our, our early career researchers at Ulster to have an opportunity to engage in this work early on because it's important that we build their, we're building the research capacity of the, of the early career researchers. So um, I'm going to uh, do just so, sort of like a, a light introduction background to, to breastfeeding, some general stuff that a lot of you already know, but because this is important in a time like this, to talk a little bit about just the normal things that we think we all know, just as sort of a bit of reminder about the, the, the beauty, the value, the intricacy, the, the, the immunological delights of breastfeeding, um, and to give you a little bit of, of information about that. So I'm going to do a little bit of introduction uh, to that and then I'm going to hand over to uh, Rachel and Rachel's going to take you through the statistical analysis that we actually did in relation to, in relation to the study. So um, that's really important. Um, and, and so I'm just going to start now in the second slide then. In terms of uh, just getting your head around uh, the, the breastfeeding rates in Northern Ireland, uh, I just want to just draw your attention to the infant feeding status at discharge um, in 2019. So in relation to that data, in Northern Ireland, we know that the total breastfeeding we got about 38%. Uh, we know that in relation to the breastfeeding in the formula, it was about 12%. And we know infant formula is 50%. Now, this is this is based on, on data that, uh, that we're very thankful to Janet uh, sharing, from sh sharing with us from the 2019 NIMAT data sample. And uh, that was based on a population of 22,040 live births. So um, thank you very much. It's just again, just to say to you that in terms of the rates of any breastfeeding, um, that has actually been increasing since 2017 from 47% up to 50% in 2019. And that's an important, and it's our first slide, it's an important slide because uh, it's, it's good sometimes just to see that the impact um, of all of the, the programs, all of the education, all of the training, the public uh, messages that they're actually having an effect. So that's a very important, a very important slide. Next slide, please. Next slide, Rachel. Yes, that's fine. Sorry. Um, in relation to, uh, again, the beauty of breastfeeding, it's again, the, the facts, uh, and there are some facts about breastfeeding that are worth sharing with you and those facts are 
uh, to, just to remember that in terms of breastfeeding, it's an, actually it's a dynamic living substance. Breast milk actually changes, it alters the, the, the actual uh, the actual components and actually alter according to the needs and, and the experience of the, and of the breastfeeding itself and also of the needs of the baby. So, you know, um, and it changes throughout the day. And we do know that it, has, that it is proven to have health benefits and that's for up to, two, to, up to uh, at least two years. It is, it is dose related, so it is important to just to note that as well as we're going through this. And in relation to the situation that we're facing in Northern Ireland right now, and across the world in relation to COVID, there is evidence that antibodies have been identified in mum's breast milk. So, you know, that's just, again, a very important fact uh, to demonstrate how, how just how dynamic um, breast, breast milk actually is. Um, and today we had a meeting with our colleagues in the Department of the Strategic Military Forum uh, Dale Spence and the, the, the leaders and Alison Little from the Public Health Agency. Um, and today they, they, there has been data released in relation to um, advice about taking the new COVID vaccine. Um, uh, and I think it's very important. It would be remiss of me not just to mention that to you today because it's so important. So that information will be available and be available on the Public Health Agency website. The, the, the key message to share with you today at this moment in time is that um, if you're fair breastfeeding, continue breastfeeding. That's a very important fact. Continue breastfeeding, do not stop breastfeeding. However, at this moment in time, because there, 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 there is um, a limited um, evidence base in relation to uh, the vaccination and pregnant mothers, it is my understanding, though I don't have it factually in front of me to share with you, it is my understanding that the advice is um, not to take the vaccine at this time. Um, and if you're breastfeeding, don't take the vaccine at this time, carry on breastfeeding. So those are two messages that I think I'm, I'm okay to share with you uh, quite confidently. And, uh, and if you go onto the Public Health Agency website, I'm sure that the information will be publicly available today. Next slide, please. So again, uh, just a reminder that um, breastfeeding uh, comes in many forms and it's the breast milk, because on my earlier slide I was talking to you about the qualities, the, the, the beauty of the breast milk. And it is, yes, it is important if the baby's actually on the, on the breast with a nipple stimulating, stimulating the, the breast. And, but in some times, in some cases, in some situations, that is not always going to be possible. So we must always be, be very flexible and have an open mind and remember that key factor here was getting the breast milk to the baby if the baby's premature, if the baby um, has problems with the uh, say it has cleft lip and palate or if the poor little soul has a congenital heart defect. Um, you know, we need to try very hard to, 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 to um, uh, find whatever methods are, are, are suitable in order to enable that child, that baby to get um, optimal breast milk. So it's, it's a small point, but it is uh, important. Next slide, please. Um, and in terms of the, the longer term benefits, uh, it's important here, but in particular to the, with regard to this very first uh, comment here, because Rachel's research is actually looking at, at, at some of the, the impact uh, in relation to mothers who have actually had a bit of a traumatic breastfeeding experience. So um, my point that I want to make to you today is that when breastfeeding is going well, which is for the majority of people, when breastfeeding is going well, those mental health benefits for the mother, the baby and extended family, they're all there. All the good things are happening when breastfeeding is going well and it's our role and we spent, put a lot of effort into trying to facilitate, enable, support, provide online support, provide one-to-one -one support to provide the education and training that Janet's doing at the department to help people, to help, to help mothers, to help midwives to actually um, enhance that education and that support so that mothers um, and get the benefits from breastfeeding, the babies get the benefits from the breastfeeding, there's an enhanced bonding, there's more comfort. And of course, um, we don't like to talk too much about financial benefits, but um, certainly um, formula milk is very, very expensive. And um, the financial bit is to me, it's a small point, but it is, it is an important one. Um, uh, and uh, next slide, please. In, I'm sure you've all seen this slide, but it's such a lovely slide. It is a really lovely site, and if, uh, if you haven't got one of these sites, you haven't got one of these posters, it's, they're really lovely to have because it's about the good things you need to know 
about exclusive breastfeeding. Now, and again, I want to just be very, very clear that the I'm focusing in here now in relation to exclusive breastfeeding. Earlier, I was speaking about getting the breast milk into babies um, because that's important and there may be babies who have problems. Um, but now I'm speaking specifically about um, the, the exclusive breastfeeding and the exclusive breastfeeding means nothing but breast milk. So it's no water, no solids, nothing else. And it is possible, as we all know, not all know, as some people know, that um, you, know, you can breastfeed your baby for six months with absolutely nothing else. There's no need to give them anything else for six months. So, and you know, that is a fact. But the good things to know, I mean, it's just look at the life saving, the provision, the ensuring, you know, helping your child and the bonding, all of the, all of those, all of those um, lovely factors, as well as, uh, as well as the one that we're getting probably a little bit more interested in um, is the environmental factors, because certainly in terms of, of um, waste control and uh, products uh, or, uh, you know, uh, we, um, I was going to say now recycling, and um, there's an awful lot of, of packaging and formula. So bearing that in mind, now next slide please. Um, now in Northern Ireland, uh, where we are fortunate to have, um, well I think we've got a great, we've got a great start here in Northern Ireland. We have our strategy for Northern Ireland, and we have, uh, and we're still, we're just, you know, we're two thirds of the way there. Um, and our, our vision is that breastfeeding becomes a social, social and the biological norm and mothers will be supported to give their babies a good start in life. And that's similar to what are, were recommended by UNICEF and recommended by the World Health Organization. Um, and it's still also recommended, in, you know, regardless of COVID-19, it is really, really important. Next slide, please. Uh, our strategy has four strategic outcomes and each one of them is really important because we want to, to, we want to provide an actual supportive environment uh, for, for breastfeeding uh, right across Northern Ireland. And we also want to make sure that, um, that the, the necessary knowledge, skills and leadership to effectively protect, promote, support and normalise breastfeeding, that that is there and that the, the, the RHSC has all of that and sharing and is sharing all of that and taking that leadership role and taking us forward. And we also want to, to they also want to make sure that they've got high quality information systems in place to underpin the development of policy and programs and support strategy delivery. Now it's really important that there's 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 an awful lot in that third point. High quality information systems. We need to know, we need to know how, how, how the breastfeeding is actually uh, is it being initiated? How long is it's, it's, it's in up, how long are women breastfeeding for? We need to have systems where we get that kind of data. And we've got we've got robust data systems. We need to know in terms of of the the education, the training, the numbers of midwives who've been trained, neonatal nurses who have been trained. We need to have really important information and have really good data collection uh, systems that are operational, so that we can you know when it comes to looking at supporting the strategy, we can be able to look at the evidence say. Yes, here's the evidence. And this last point is, is, is very important. And I know that the, the, the PHA put an awful lot of work into this, um, an informed and supportive public. And that's why it's so important um, to just to mention to you that certainly for myself and, my, and the team that are here today, we are all delighted that the, that the, um, the HSC ha has been pro providing some funding for our Doctor of Medical Research Society. Um, which was established in 2007. Uh, one of the key aims of that is to actually promote and develop and uh, uh, breastfeeding research. And we just had our fourth annual research uh, conference on breastfeeding where we brought together, you know, uh, key researchers, brand new research, really innovative stuff. And, and we've actually been, uh, we've been building this, this platform for years and we have another one set up for next year. But that's again, that again is an output from, from, um, the, uh, from the RPHA and from the visionaries like the Nicola Armstrongs, the people who actually see and believe in the general covers, who believe that the work that we're doing is really, really important. And, and that outreach, we, we have a specific outreach to the public and we are working, we are working with, with the, um, the Breastfeeding Northern Island Network um, with, with the team there 
and and with Maria Hearn and her group and we're working with the with the BHA and we're also working with the breastfeeding implementation strategy group so we're working we're working very hard to do our bit so having said all of that I want to move on to the next slide and it's at this point in time I want to say to you that um Rachel is going to now take over and, and take you through the, 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 main, um, the main outcomes from, uh, from the data analysis that's been conducted on this research. And uh, thank you very much uh, for listening. And Rachel, over to you. That's great. Thank you, Marlene. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Marlene said, I'm Rachel Black, and I'm going to take you through the findings from our analysis of these responses from the first breastfeeding questions to be included in the Northern Ireland Life and Times survey. Um, so as we're looking at breastfeeding, we wanted to provide an overview of which survey respondents had experience of uh, breastfeeding any of their children at least once. And out of the respondents, 804 had had children, with 45% of those um, not having had any, uh, not having had breastfeeding, breastfed any children, whilst 55% um, of respondents said they had breast any of their children at least once. Now we found that um, people uh, who had a higher level of education were actually more likely to have breastfed any of their children while age, income, marital status and living in an urban or rural location actually had no impact on whether a respondent's child had ever been breastfed. Now, uh, what's important to, to note is that this all needs to be reviewed, uh, viewed in the context because many of the respondent's circumstances might have changed since having had their children. So for example, we don't know what their income level or education was at the time of actually breastfeeding. Uh, so the survey questions um, appeared to fall into some common themes. So we conducted some analysis on them and seven suitable concepts were actually identified. And you can see these listed on the slide here. Uh, today, we're just gonna go through um, four of, of these because unfortunately there just isn't enough time to go into them all. Uh, however, we will be following up with an academic publication on all of our findings where you will be able to get a more in-depth understanding of the statistical analysis that we did and the concepts. Uh, so in addition to um, the development of these concepts, there was further analysis that was carried out to look for relationships between the, these main concepts and some key demographics. And I'll highlight these uh, as I go through the slides. So the first concept I want to talk to you about today is the knowledge of the health benefits of breastfeeding. Now the respondents were asked their level of agreement with a number of statements about breastfeeding and their health, the health benefits. And these questions were provided by the expert team at the Public Health Agency. And encouragingly, almost 40% agreed with the reduction of infection as a result of breastfeeding. And the data showed that women with higher knowledge scores were those people who had um, sorry, the data showed that women had higher knowledge scores and also um, parents who had a child who had been breastfed at least once also had a higher knowledge of, of the benefits of breastfeeding. So um, when we looked then at the views of infant feeding, we could see that the message that breastfeeding is good for baby was being understood, you know, with 87% of people agreeing. Um, now, the, this number had fallen um, since the 2014-2015 NI Health Survey. Um, they reported 90% um, uh, at that time. So it had fallen slightly, but it is actually on the increase again with um, 86 on the 2017-2018, and now it's back up to the 87. So that's, that's great to see that coming back up. Um, however, there does seem to be a knowledge gap as 20% of the respondents agreed that formula is as healthy as breast milk and 21% uh, actually responded that they didn't know. Uh, when asked if breast milk is healthier than formula, 58% said yes, but 19% still said that they didn't know. And when we looked at previous NI health surveys, again, uh, it showed that the number of people who agreed that formula is as healthy as breast milk has gone down so therefore less people think that formula is better than breast milk in terms of its health benefits, which is progress, which is great. It's certainly going in the right direction. However, the knowledge about breast milk being healthier than formula has actually decreased with a 4% drop. 
which means people are becoming less aware that breast milk is healthier than formula since the data came through in 2018. Now, just to clarify, uh, though, that the questions weren't uh, directly comparable and the, the sample was different. So we were asking a different sample. Uh, in the, the previous surveys. However, it does give us an idea of how the knowledge might be changing. Um, and when we looked at the analysis um, with the NI Life and Times um, and looked for the relationships between this whole concept and, and the demographic characteristics, it showed that twice as many women as men actually agreed that formula is as healthy as breast. Uh, other significant relationships were found um, between the views and in infant feeding, um, and that was higher level of qualification, people who lived in urban areas and those who bre had breastfed their children, they all impacted on, on, on this concept. Now, the, the next one then, it was the attitudes to breastfeeding. And th this was a great one because it really shows that Northern Ireland uh, people responded positively with really high scores across the statements in favour of breastfeeding. Um, but it also then, of course, raises the question of why we're not necessarily seeing this reflected in breastfeeding rates and why are women have, um, coming through as having more positive views towards formula feeding. Uh, so so that's, that's just points to think about. Uh, the statistical analysis in this concept found that it was actually the younger participants and those with higher qualifications that had more positive attitudes. And the um, final concept uh, that I want to present to you today is that of attitudes to breastfeeding um, in public. And there was a mixed response to these questions. So just 14% of respondents agreed that women should only feed in private or at home, which is encouraging. However, from the 2014-2015 um, NI Health Survey, uh, it was actually reported as 12%. So that is highlighting a drop in, in positive attitudes to breastfeeding in public. And for the question of whether there should be a law in Northern Ireland to protect women who want to breastfeed in public, 59% agreed, but there was 20% that disagreed. Uh, again, when we looked at the data from 2014-2015, there was a um, the, the, there's now been a drop in the attitudes of, in terms of the laws in that as well, as that survey reported 71% felt a law should be in place to protect women to breastfeed. Um, of course, these are these are things we, we, we can only look at the data that, that um, has been presented in NI Life and Times, um, and, and it's important to, to, to think that there, there may be a, a number of different reasons for this, but it is an interesting um, just to see those, those changes. Now, um, further analysis into this concept found that the significant characteristics which positively impacted the respondents' attitudes were their age, their level of, uh, of education, and those who were on a middle income, and also, again, urban residents uh, tended to have a more positive attitude towards breastfeeding in public. And I just want to highlight as well that um, currently in Northern Ireland, women who choose to breastfeed in public are protected by the sex discrimination law, whereby they cannot be treated unfairly for breastfeeding in public. And the Breastfeeding and uh, Welcome Here scheme also um, allows businesses in Northern Ireland to identify that they are happy for women and they're supporting women to breastfeed their children on their premises. And they, um, when they sign up, they get a window sticker and a certificate that they can display to, to show that they're part of the scheme and, and invite women in. So um, just some key messages uh, where um, women that uh, were found to have a higher knowledge of the benefits of breastfeeding. And indeed, parents who had had um, any breastfed children also had more knowledge of the health benefits. Um, there was a, a small number of respondents um, who who found breastfeeding to be offensive or distasteful, but uh, it was you know it was it was small, and that was really encouraging. Um, interestingly, there was twice as many women as men that agreed that formula was as healthy as breast milk, and um, then overall. The analysis found that the key characteristics which were related to a more positive attitude to breastfeeding and breastfeeding knowledge were actually younger people, uh, those with a higher level of education and people who were ur urban residents. Um, now, I think whenever we were um, conducting the analysis, it's very important to consider the high number of don't know responses. 
um because that will have had an impact on the statistical analysis and this is something we will be addressing in the uh, our subsequent pub publication um just to explain that a little further unfortunately i don't have have time now um but you know uh, it is it, it will it will be, be available to read um so really in conclusion that the report showed us that um, the factors influencing the decision and infant feeding methods, I mean, they are complex. However, the, the NI Life and Times data really highlights that the transference of knowledge and early education on breastfeeding health benefits and support systems, you know, needs to be addressed. Uh, we didn't have time to report here today on the Young Life and Times data. However, we will follow that up, but it, it won't one of the things that did come through on that was that young people um, were actually keen to see some education come through um, it, on breastfeeding and I think that's really encouraging to see that the the younger generations are thinking about breastfeeding they're positive about, about breastfeeding and it's something that that they want to learn more about and I really think that that would be a really important key consideration to to, to think about in terms of policy and further research. And again, uh, just to reiterate what Marlene had said, um, you know, we're giving a lot of thanks for the help, advice, and comments that we had from from Janet Calvert and um, and all of the team really at the public health agency. There, um, it, it was very much appreciated, um, and and thank you for taking the time to do that. And just thank you very much for listening to us today. And if there's any questions. Okay, um, thank you very much to um, Marlon and Rachel and also to um, Julie and Paul as well, who are behind the scenes and now hopefully coming in. Yeah. Um, I should also have said that um, all four of our presenters today are members of the Institute of Nursing and Health Research at Ulster University. And um, as um, you've said, there will be more publications coming out of the data um, in due course. Um, so we now have some time for questions, um, which hopefully all four of our panellists will be um, happy to talk about. We do have one question so far, um, which is asking about the link between higher education and breastfeeding, which, which you highlighted. Um, and uh, is there any evidence that women in employment, which requires higher educational qualifications, also perhaps have better maternity provision? Um, for example, maternity, patern maternity leave provision in the universities is higher than in retail sector or, or other sectors. Could that contribute to the higher levels of breastfeeding among higher education women? I mean, how much of an influence do you think the um, maternity provision does have on people's attitudes or importantly on their behaviour? Because obviously people may have a positive attitude towards breastfeeding, but may feel that their employment situation um, uh, means that they can't actually um, do that. That's a very interesting question. Now it's 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 it's, it's got quite a lot of it. It's got quite a long tail. Um, so maybe in terms of the data, maybe Paul, if you just want to sort of like let's 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 focus on the data first of all, um, uh, and and then and then let's have a, a, a discussion about this because uh, we weren't actually that question would require quite a bit of of. Um, uh, data analysis in the, in the data set? Uh, realistically, in relation to the data set, I don't think it's something that we could really achieve in mm -hmm. this data set. It's, um, it's a very specific question, um, and it, it would require that question to be included within the survey prior to it going out. Um, we can look at the data again and see if we could possibly extract that information or to identify that population or sub subsample but mm -hmm. um it, it's short answer no we can't we can't prove it or disprove it at this point in time because we simply haven't measured it thank you Julie. do you want to add anything um i suppose if uh women who are in uh workplaces where there is better provision for maternity care it, it may be that as we know from other breastfeeding research, that that's extra support for those women who breastfeed. And support, as we know, is one of the key influencing factors in whether someone is able to breastfeed and continue breastfeeding. So uh, that uh, very well could have an impact on how long or whether they initiate breastfeeding. But as Paul says, I don't think that that is allowing us the opportunity to analyze that in this instance, 
but it's definitely a really, really interesting question. Thank you very much, Rachel. Do you want to add anything to that? I think I would agree with Julie, you know, um, support is such a huge factor when it comes to breastfeeding. And I think that um, with for, for those women who, whether they feel that they're not getting enough support um, for their maternity and, and maybe in, the, in their place of work afterwards, you know, that is one of the things that um, we do talk about in terms of um women being supported by employers um, to continue breastfeeding. Um, you know, it is important for women if they're going back to work, if they have to go back to work earlier than maybe some other women, some women don't have to go back to work at all. And I do think that that can um, have an impact if, they, if the support isn't there. But in terms of, as, as Paul says, to really, really delve into that and, and, and look at the data would be the only way to really firmly answer that question. Thank you very much. I think we really would need the question to have been asked, the specific question to have been asked in the in the actual survey to, to give a full answer to that. I mean, we can we can say things like we know that from the or from the body of literature that exists that education is a, is a is a key factor in relation to the numbers of women who breastfeed, and that's 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 even seen that we've seen that on our own slides, and and the factor of where you live in, in urban versus rural, there there are factors. Um, so, so um, thank you very much. If there are any other um, questions or comments? Um, yeah, could I uh, just come in to say that the survey did include a couple of questions looking at, at people's attitudes to the role of employers. So there were slight support for the idea that employers should facilitate a woman's breastfeed, but of course, or express milk, but obviously I, I would say in um, uh, different jobs are we have to look at the context of different jobs and different employers and the different um, pressures so um, the reality might be very different even though um, there may be support for that uh, there's also a question about the role of employers as well but I know that will be something that you'll be looking at in future publications um, so uh, there's a couple of other questions one is asking about education to the partners of the breastfeeding parent so that they can understand and provide support to them again that's something we we briefly asked in the um the survey and not something that you reported on today but perhaps is there something you could say about yes well, yes well let's see let's see let's let's just just start with paul again just in terms of the of the data and and we'll give everybody a chance to make a comment paul sorry i'm trying to read the question here just to get a better idea but what was it again um, the question was, is there an, uh, well, the question won't be in the data, but I was just uh, raising the issue of partners of breastfeeding parents. The question was, is there enough education being given to partners of the breastfeeding parent so that they can understand and provide more support to them? Now, obviously, we wouldn't have asked yeah. that in the survey, yeah. but obviously the role of the partner is very um, important and was, um, there were a few questions relating yeah. to that. Yeah, there were two questions related now, but then also just picking up on the fact here of, uh, of the, the initial question, because we have two, two, two parts to this question there. One is looking at the behavioral aspects of breastfeeding and, and the like, and then one look at, at attitudinal and it's predominantly attitudinal. But on the, the behavioral one, um, the, the, the respondents that completed this were, were male and female, okay. uh, and they were providing information from male and female about the uh, behaviour, the breastfeeding taking place um, in at least one child within the family. And what we got was an equal response from both male and female in it. So there seems to be an engagement with males is, uh, already taking place in that. And also just alongside that, we also see that in the subsequent more complex analysis, uh, there's not a, a great difference according to gender in, in many of the attitudinal questions. So um, there, there is a fair bit to say that uh, males are pretty clued in with what's going on here. Um, and it's, it's not just quite specifically a gender issue. Now, a proviso on top of that is we're dealing with the responses that we have here. But in subsequent analysis, it goes on later on, where we look at the don't knows. Mm -hmm. 
we're, what we're seeing is that there is a fair percentage, there's a gender effect occurring in that don't know category. So there is more work to be doing or to be done uh, in relation to gender and educating uh, the males in particular up to the benefits and, and knowledge around the benefits of breastfeeding. But at, at the moment, there's a fair bit of um, evidence there to show that they are pretty clued in to breastfeeding behaviour and what goes on, what the benefits are already there. Thank you, Paul. Julie? Um, yeah, just what Paul has said there, there that uh, the, the survey data looked at um, and what we had presented there was parents who had had a child who was breastfed yeah, exactly. and that there was no difference. So yeah, just exactly what Paul has said, but there is more work to be done around the don't knows. And I think it's also important to say that in the young life and times that uh, young people, both male and female, were really interested and wanted more information for themselves. And th there was a very small number who felt that it was more for young women than for young men, but overall, they all wanted to have breastfeeding um, information and felt that it would be important to them for the future, obviously. So, but a gender issue remains with the uh, don't knows, as Paul has said. Thank you. And Rachel? I would, um, I think just reflecting the, the, the fact that there has been um, a, a gender split in the don't knows would 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 suggest that th those um you know assuming that it's it's male partners um th that would suggest that there is there is a gap in their knowledge and in terms of um providing education i would say you know anybody who who maybe doesn't know the the impact of breastfeeding and the the benefits of breastfeeding things like that um would absolutely benefit from some more education on that because in order to um support someone if you have a, a partner who who wishes to breastfeed i think knowing those those um things that that the the benefits to the child can help a family make an informed decision i think when it comes to infant feeding decisions it's important to ensure that it's an informed decision and if they're making that decision as a family unit then the partners, um, the, the, the more knowledge and education that they have on breastfeeding means that they can make an informed decision. Otherwise, it's just not informed. And, and, they're, you know, and I would say that, yes, it, it definitely would be of benefit to, to, to educating um, all and everybody on, on all of those sorts of factors. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So hopefully we've answered the question sufficiently. And I think the, the, what you're hearing resounding here is yes, the answer to that question is yes, there is a need for further education. It will have an impact and we support it. And in terms of the data that we've been given the opportunity to look at, there is more to be on earth. There's more to be revealed and, and hopefully further analysis and that will come out in papers, but, but it is a factor. The, the, the gender is a factor. And we didn't look and we haven't looked at um, uh, you know, same couples. So just, 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 just to you know, certainly in terms of um, um, uh, same-sex couples, as, as in uh, females, um, where where there's where there's been um, breastfeeding, because it wasn't in the in the survey. It's just a small point. It's just sometimes you know people uh, get a little bit twitchy about that, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, in this data at this present moment in time. But we are conscious of the fact that that uh, will become a factor later on. Um, thank you. So, uh, Paula, what, what was that? Hey, Is there um, anything else? Thank you. Uh, well, very um, gratifyingly, there are a few um, oh, good. questions saying excellent. Thank you. So that's what we always oh, like to hear. Oh, thank um, you very much. Also um, highlighted in the chat um, where people can go on the website to find a full list of the questions that we did ask. Um, and also uh, to say that we are yes. recording the video and it will be recording the event and we will make this available on the ARC website in due course. Just uh, take us a, a week or so to get it edited and obviously any publications we will be mentioning on the website as well. Um, uh, a question coming in, was the panel surprised by any of the results? Um, for example, the low percentage of um, respondents who understood that um, bottle fed babies are at a higher risk of so sudden infant death syndrome? Um, I mean, I say the knowledge questions, there, there was the, that battery of about seven or eight knowledge questions at the start of the survey, um, asking people um, if they um, 
about how much they knew about those particular health benefits, both in terms of health benefits for the baby and health benefits um, for the mothers. Um, as you highlighted in your, I think it was about your second slide, Rachel, um, mm -hmm. that uh, there was quite a variation in the level of um, knowledge that knowledge. people have and a huge, huge um, amount of people, amount. Of course, people saying don't know. Um, were you surprised in particular, say, in terms of the, the cop death question? Do you want to answer that, Rachel? Seeing you started there, I don't I want will, to interrupt I, you. I think one of the, really for me the, the thing that really surprised me the most in terms of the knowledge questions was actually the percentage of don't knows rather than any specific question, um, because I think off the top of my head I think it was something between forty seven and sixty seven sixty eight. I'm not one hundred percent. Something in the sixties uh, percent of people actually responded don't know to each of those statements, say to each of those questions. And I think for me, um, that was quite a shock, more than any specific question, just that that that, that sort of range of don't knows. And I think that really highlighted, it was a really pertinent thing to, to come out of that because um, again, uh, as we, we mentioned with the, in terms of education of partners and everything like that, um, it just it just highlighted a gap in a gap there in the knowledge, so um, that would be my, my that was my view. Thank you, Rachel. That. Julie. Julie. Yes, well, you? actually, Rachel and I worked. Uh, you know, we all worked together in this, but it was one thing that Rachel and I had discussed um, that we were quite surprised that 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 knowledge is available, but it's not just being translated into messages that um, that the general public can use, and I think all messages relating to any research that's carried out should follow those rules that they're usable, that they're understandable and that they're helpful. And perhaps there might be some work around the translation of uh, research into messages for everyone to use in relation and so that they can make the informed decision around how they choose to feed their baby. Thank you. Paul, you were going to say something about the data? Yeah. Uh, um... Over a glass of wine, um, I sort of told through the, the data, and um, I, I think there's a couple of things, that, and um, it's already been mentioned. The don't knows were fantastic, uh, not fantastic in the sense of fantastic, but interesting to look at statistically, uh, in the sense that we're, we were seeing that um, there's predominantly more males were indicating that they don't know, particularly around the, the knowledge questions and asking about that. And then when we see very clear, discrete questions such as uh, breastfeeding is embarrassing or the likes are beneficial um, to give it a positive uh, angle as well, we're seeing very clear responses. There's only about 4% of don't knows for net. When we looked at the don't knows um, and delve deeper into it, we're seeing that there's a, a, about a two to one uh, ratio here of males to females included within that don't know group especially in those much larger group that Rachel has already alluded to. Um, and we're seeing that uh, particularly more prominent in the younger group, age group, within the males and the females. So um, the, the, the don't knows was a, an interesting finding and it's something that, that I'm looking forward to, to getting more into because that offers us the potential to, to uh, strategically target interventions in the way forward uh, to, to deal with those don't know issues um, rather than trying to change negative hitch issues or uh, attitudes. Um, so that was one part. And then the other part, and I still don't understand this fully myself, and therefore, therefore that's why it's interesting, was around the urban-rural split. Yeah, that was surprising. Um, in a fair few, what, what, what we've seen was that uh, people, people in urban settings tended to have um, a much higher, um, a much positive, more positive attitude towards breastfeeding than we, we did in the rural settings. That, that was quite, uh, for, for somebody not coming from the breastfeeding background, then that was something interesting to me and stood out for me. So glad we had a man on the panel. I'm so glad that you were part of this, Paul. Not just because of your statistical knowledge, but also because of the fact that you are a man and you're a father and, and you have a, an interest in this subject area. Um, 
I, I just wanted to say that the slide, that that, that particular slide, um, uh, you know, Paula, in terms of that slide that we presented in relation to the knowledge of the health benefits, um, out of that slide, there was one thing that did impress me, and uh, we have had a chat about it as a team. And the one thing that impressed me was the fact that the majority of individuals actually had a grasp of the the, the, the one of those, if we were to select one of those um, particular uh, knowledge questions in relation to the one that I, I, I personally believe we have the most evidence or the best evidence, the best quality evidence, the, the, the grade A kind of evidence, that is in relation to the infection. And out of that particular slide, uh, the, the majority of individuals did actually, um, out, of that, out of those who responded, the majority of them actually selected that. So I was actually quite pleased to see that. So um, hopefully that answers the question. So I think we've all we've all we've all been pleased with different things. We've all seen different things, and uh, and it's been quite an interesting journey for us, and enjoyed answering that question. So um, could I we're... just come in here on that question, um, Marlene? Um, when we're talking about the don't knows, um, yes, we're please. designing our life and time survey and young life and time survey. There's a lot of debate about um, should you allow people to say don't know mm. in response to a question. I mean, obviously, it's really nice if we can have report the proportion of people who agree with something or the proportion of people who disagree with something. To have don't knows, people saying, no, oh, well, I, I don't know or I can't choose is a bit messy. Mm -hmm. But we're, Life and Times and Young Life and Times are attitude surveys. And I think it's it's very important that we allow people to say that they don't know because I agree. you all have strong opinions in some things. And then there's other things you're asked about that you may have never talked about thought about in your life mm -hmm. and it is important that people say that they don't know and I think in um, relation to a topic like this where organizations who are developing policy or publicity campaigns this uh, the showing that there's a high proportion mm -hmm. of the public don't know something actually is in a way more useful than knowing the proportion of the population who does know something so it's um it, it is kind of a battle that we often fight oh, please please don't survey. take that question out please don't take that response <laughs> out because won't. it's really 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 important because for us you know from an from from an, an educational perspective the don't know means if you ask somebody something to say they don't know of course they're going to be challenged then to think oh you know where do i get the information it might inspire people encourage people to actually go and looking for the information and go and seek seek answers it has an information seeking uh, factor that that i don't think we should underestimate the questions do that to people because everybody's affected by whatever it is experience whatever questions we ask them it has a it has a ripple effect it's like a little mm -hmm. pebble in a pond and we don't really know about it and i really do think that that we are challenged when we look at these don't knows but i'm also encouraged by them because it gives you an opportunity to say yes there's a need for further education yes there's a need for more public health policy and um, initiatives are doing a great job we need to be doing more in schools we need you know we need to be making we you know more 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 impact at sort of local level with regards to uh, making breastfeeding welcomes uh, just part of, of of every every shop every facility you know there's things there's things that can be done so i'm i really like i really like having don't knows sorry about that <laughs> Glad I, I we're all on the same page there <laughs> i i agree with that completely they, they don't know, so if you force people down into the dichotomy of yeah, uh, yes or no or whatever, uh, um, then it's forcing them to make a judgment where they don't actually know what is right. The don't knows offer an opportunity to delve deeper into that so that you can have strategic and focused interventions taking place to change that don't know to a positive rather than dealing simply with the negative attitude and try and change that. Um, attitudinally, it's much harder to change a negative attitude than it is to educate people in the right way. So, and statistically, from a statistics background, we're able to delve deeper into the don't knows, especially with nice large data sets like this, uh, and explore and identify who are the, the, who are the subpopulations that we need to target our information strategies are. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I go on to the next question. Um, somebody's been asking about data collected to support about support from healthcare professionals to breastfeed. Um, interestingly, we 
the one question we did ask in the survey about healthcare professionals was actually a more negative one, which is um, asking people did they agree or disagree that healthcare professionals put too much pressure on people to breastfeed, and we found about 40% of people agreed with that. Um, so um, I don't know if any panel want to respond um, um, in to relation to that yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything about that, Paul? Well, it, it doesn't, there's not much I can say about it. it it's really, um, we don't have any, any real questions relating to it. A uh, straightforward single question. Um, yeah. It's an important question because um, midwives are, are, are quite often, um, you know, there are comments which float about, which are, uh, you know, there are comments which are made about us being, you know, Gestapo midwives and forcing people and and pressurizing them into breastfeeding and 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 so that I can see, I, I it's 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 probably. Um, uh, to think that 40% of people um, have that, uh, you've got that response is probably, again, uh, it's an indicator, an indicator, an indicator of work that needs to be done. Um, Paula, I think, really and truthfully, and I'm sure that it would be very good to hear what our colleagues from the public health agency have to think and say about that. And um, because it, it um, and particularly Janet, uh, she was able to speak in terms of um, our, our, um, our education and training with regards to breastfeeding. It's, 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 it's a tough one and it, 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 is, it is a challenge. And um, Rachel or Julie, would either of you like to make any comment in relation to that point, please? Um, I suppose um, the question that was asked, uh, the responses to it, so I'll just actually want to read the question that was asked as Paul, you've said there, there was one question asked uh, for respondents to agree or disagree that health professionals place too much importance on whether a baby is fed using breast milk or infant formula. So 39% of respondents agreed with that, uh, that statement. 20% <clears throat> um, disagreed, 17 neither agreed nor disagreed, and 25% didn't know. So again, as, with, as we've been saying previously, there is a large portion of people who didn't know. Um, I suppose that, that may suggest that there's some parents who feel that healthcare professions are too focused mm -hmm. on um, infant feeding choices. However, as we know from the uh, BFA, um, all the uh, trusts in Northern Ireland are BFA friendly and um, that there's that um, opportunity and that education for midwives and healthcare professionals to promote breastfeeding to new mums and parents and again to normalise breastfeeding. So I suppose there's a double, it's maybe... It's a tough one. It is a tough one, yeah. It is one. But thank you very much for sharing the data with us, Julie, because it's important just to, to read that question out so that everybody could hear that. Uh, Rachel? Is there anything that you'd have, like to add to that, please? I, I don't think I really have much to add because I think Julie, um, Julie really said it all there. Um, uh, you know, education for the healthcare professionals. Um, obviously, um, we want uh, all of our healthcare professionals to to have up to date knowledge, or so that they can. Um, be confident in, in the, the, the advice that they're providing to women and their families. So um, because the question wasn't there where we were asking, you know, that, that, that specific question, whether they felt or whether women, the, the families or women felt that they had um, enough education and support from healthcare professionals, you know, the question really was whether they felt um, there was too much focus on, on, on the feeding, you know, by healthcare professionals. It's, it's, it really is hard to, to, to answer it's that It's a question. tough one. It's really tough. And, 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 uh, and Paula, I'm glad you asked it because it is, it's, it's such, it's such a, uh, it's a loaded deep question. And, and there's so much to think about in relation to how people could formulate their, their ideas in relation to it. Um, and, you know, I could say to you that, you know, um, when people find find treasure, or they find something that's really, really valuable, you know, um, or they and, and they think that this is something that they should be sharing with everybody. You can nearly understand. I, I'm I'm not saying this just because I'm a midwife and I believe in breastfeeding and I really believe that the breast milk to get it to the child in no matter what direct no matter what way is absolutely key if you have problems. But I really do believe that breastfeeding is 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 such an important um 
uh, biological nurturing, you know, such an important act, such an important behavior to, to learn. I, I really feel very strongly about it, but I can also understand, you know, why, why, why people who really, um, you know, have learned, appreciated, valued it, seen it in action, who've breastfed their own babies, you know, who've, who've seen the health benefits, who, the, you know, the psychological benefits, I can understand why they want to tell everybody about it and why they want to share it. And so you can nearly, you can, you can understand it. You can understand how, how, how they can do that, but you can also understand how people who are sensitive and are having a bad day or having a, a, the breastfeeding is not going too well for them, they may feel that pressure from, from, from midwives. But I know in my heart and soul, midwives are trying to do their best and they know, they know that this is the, that in terms of, 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 infant nutrition in terms of the health of our nation, the health of the future of our, of our, of our children, that to, to, to give it your best shot, to do your very best with it and give it, give it, to keep an open mind to it. And, and, and if you've had a bad time, try the second time around, you know, don't give up on it because really and truly, you know, it is such, it is such a, a such an, a, such an important um, way to weigh, certainly the nutrition aspects outweigh, outweigh, uh, formula feeding any day, the psychological benefits, the immunological response. I mean, when you think about it, when you even think about little babies who've got who've got severe heart disease, and when they are actually to the breast and they're breastfeeding, though they're struggling for breath, they're struggling for air, their oxygen, the saturation levels, you know, everything sort of adjusts just because that human nature act, that, that human contact, that one to one, that that loving. That loving bond you know there's just so much more to breastfeeding than i think we really we really haven't really captured it so i can understand how midwives really want every woman every single woman to give it a shot give it a go put the baby to the breast give it a go don't be afraid don't 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 you know don't let you know past history or experiences or life or don't let them things stop you from making that bond with your little baby and 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 trying your very best to breastfeed or they used to give the baby the breast milk. I mean, I know midwives, I know midwives, I have colleagues who who actually, you know, uh, they've actually, um, you know, they haven't breastfed the babies, they, they've, they've, they've expressed their breast milk and their husband or their partner ha has actually given it to the baby in, 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 in a bottle. And I, my, my colleagues might not even want me to say such a thing. I have no problem with that. The baby's getting the breast milk, the mother's giving the baby the breast milk. It's, it's, it's all about having an open mind and saying, you know, you got it, we've got to give this a, We've got to give this breast feeding. We've got to normalize it and think, what's the normal thing to do? Yeah, that's that's normal for children to know. That's normal. That's how we do it here. And uh, and here's a few variations. And you know, this is this is the way forward. That's how I see it. Sorry, I got rabbiting on there, um, Paula. It's, it's just that I shouldn't have got onto that shop topic. My colleague <laughs> should have shut me down. So sorry. So sorry. Well, I just think it shows um, what you know. You've highlighted what a complex um, and emotional subject it is um, and there's a lot of factors that um, go into this but um, obviously we've got the health benefits on one side we've got other people feeling pressures and other I think what uh, a full exploration of the data will mm -hmm. get a better understanding of people's um, attitudes and you know when it, as you say in terms of the breastfeeding strategy it's about making uh, about normalizing breastfeeding mm -hmm. and the survey data will give us a, mm -hmm. a a good understanding of perhaps what the, the state of play is now compared to the data that have, questions that have been asked a few years ago in the health survey and perhaps when we go um, at the end of the strategy in a few years time perhaps um, have a look and see what the, um, the situation is there. Um, well it's just after three o'clock so I'm afraid we've run out of time. I think it's something that um, we could sit Aww. talking about for a long time. And with some fantastic questions here, sorry that we weren't able to get to them. Um, but as I say, this is just the start of our analysis of the of the data. And um, you know, perhaps perhaps we could have another event at some other time, yes. perhaps in a, in a more less structured. Indeed, perhaps we may even be able to meet face to face someday. Yeah. So that might be that'd be lovely, wouldn't it, to see each other? Um, well, thank you so much. And I, I mean, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity to just talk about something that's so 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 terribly important to me as a person and, and as a researcher and as a mother and granny. So thank you so, so much for the opportunity to share this with you. And um, thank you for, um, you know, for, for to Rachel and Julie and Paul, because really and truly a teamwork together, everybody achieves more. And I really hope that you find the discussion even even more fruitful because you have the the the, the
variation of opinions uh, and knowledge and expertise. And thank you very much, Paula, for the invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.